Morning folks, it's been a while and I wanted to update you on how my compost experiment was going. If you recall, my plan was to use the straw that I have plus all of the cow manure, combine those together, get a hot compost pile, run piping through it, run water through it, and then use that hot water to heat my tomatoes this winter. Well, I tried these little small scale experiments to see if plain straw or shredded straw would work better. As it turns out, um, what I found was that this doesn't work at all. These things didn't heat up, they didn't do anything, they just turned into kind of a soupy, putrid mess. So, word of the wise, compost does not really work well on a small scale, or at least large, really, large, uh, large particle compost doesn't work well on a small scale. So, plan B was to go ahead and build a giant compost pile. Uh, I wrapped it in some, some landscape fabric to keep the moisture in. This took uh, about a week to, for the boys and I to, to fill it up with uh, layers of straw and layers of manure. I left it wet, excuse me, I left it dry because I didn't want to start the composting process until I had it nice and full. Right now it's up to this level. Uh, it really takes this amount of, of mass and weight and pressure to get that, that heat going. So I built the pile up, then I spent about half a day just soaking it through, wrapped it up, and this has been cooking now for about a week. Last, I did it last Saturday. I finally got the water into it, which is the final element you need. Uh, and then it, last Saturday was pretty cold. By Sunday, it was at about 85, 90 degrees, uh, and it's been steadily warming up. It hit 100 degrees by Tuesday, um, and it hit about 115, I think, yesterday morning. And here it is Saturday morning, so it's been exactly one week, and I'm at 126, exactly what I was looking for, 120 to 130 degrees. That's the temperature in a low setting for a hot water heater. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to turn this pile, I'm going to add some fresh straw and manure to it, try to keep it going longer, and as I turn it, I'm going to take my water pipe and build it into it. I'll show you that in just a second. All right, here we've got the compost pile taken apart, ready to put it back together again with those hoses in there. Here we are, rebuilding the pile, little by little. Put up a layer, coil a bit of pipe over the top of it, hose it down to get it wet, keep going. We're about halfway there. You can see I've got the hose sticking out. I'm winding it as I go. Layer of uh, compost material. Put the hose on, put another layer of compost material, wind and wind. We're almost done. And there you have it. One giant compost pile. It's about one cubic meter of compost all bundled up like the world's worst Christmas present. You can see I've got the, uh, the black plastic all the way around it. I put a layer of straw across the top just to try to keep the moisture in. And you can see down here I've got my hose sticking out. And of course that's going to connect into the hose that uh, goes under the ground. Now I'll try to get the, uh, the pump and the, and the water tank in here in the next video. Okay, folks, we finally got everything set up. We got everything working. Let me show you what we did. Um, I found an old pond pump, an old, I think actually for sort of one of those inflatable pools. Found one of those pumps and took some of my irrigation parts and made what you see here. So as you can see, we got our sump pump down here. Actually spent most of my money on this project. I was trying to use all recycled parts, but getting this pump adapted to this uh, irrigation system took five or six parts to step it down. Probably spent 20 bucks just on those parts to get from there to there. Anyway, so what we've got here is a pump, and I've got a, it's an old igloo here, a uh, styrofoam igloo. Pumping water up through, coiled through the, the uh, compost pile here, and it goes down into the ground, loops back and around, and comes out here. Now, when I first turned this water on, when I first put the water in here, it was about 55 degrees. The water is now the water is right at 70 degrees. Now this water in this uh, in this tank here will eventually come up to temperature. Actually the water is going up at about 72 degrees. So uh, the compost pile right today is 145 degrees. Uh, and it's been that way for the last three or four days. So that's probably going to be the maximum. One of the things that's interesting, and I read this on an online forum, is that in order to maximize my heat in here, I need to adjust the flow of water. Now how do I adjust the flow of water? Well, I, can't, I can't make the pump, I can't change the electricity of it. But I found one of these little shutoff valves, and by opening it up or closing it off, I can control the flow of water. The slower the water flows through there, the more heat it's going to pick up. So I'm going to try this 
see it for a few days, and we'll see what the temperature of the ground is once I'm done with this. We'll measure the temperature of the ground every day, see what kind of change we're getting. Let's go measure the temperature of the ground now. All right, right now the soil temperature at one of the tomato plants is 61 degrees. We will see, and then the pump's been on for about 10 minutes. So we'll see how much the soil temperature goes up. If I can keep the soil temperature at 70 degrees, uh, regardless of the air temperature, then I think that this covering it with covering the tomatoes with plastic and then covering the plastic with, with straw, that will take the place of having to do any sort of forced air, hot air system, which is a big plus for me since I am uh, amperage limited down here in the greenhouse. Well, we'll check back in a few days. Until next time, I'll take care.